Hello and welcome to today's Yumbles Seller interview. I am Katie Kittery, one of the founders of Yumbles, and I'm delighted today to speak with um, a fantastic baker from up in Oakham, Rutland, which I just found out today with Google is the smallest county, I think, in the UK. That's a little fact yeah. I learned today. Um, so Caroline, she specializes in beautifully iced biscuits, um, really making really thoughtful, um, personalized biscuit gifts. So without further ado, if I can um, ask you, Caroline, to just briefly introduce yourself. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, I'm Caroline. Um, Rutland is the smallest county in the UK, unless the tide is in oh. on the Isle of Wight, and then the Isle of Wight is smaller, apparently. Oh, interesting. Oh, yeah. 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 But watch this interview for business information and geographical <laughs> information, yeah. pub quiz knowledge. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, so I run the kitchen. So, um it's a biscuit, predominantly letterbox um, biscuit baking business that we set up. Well, I set it up from my kitchen table uh, eight and a half years ago now. Um, and we moved into our bakery in Oakham around about six, six years ago, um, gradually kind of growing our premises and growing our team since then. So, yeah, we specialize in sending thoughtful, personalized gifts through the post with the idea being that they're just there to pick somebody up and give them a little lift, let them know that somebody's thinking about them. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. It's, it's such a must be such a satisfying business. And um, one of the things that we notice when when on Yumbles, and I, I'm an awful gift giver, although I've got better since since running Yumbles, but is is it's lovely the messages you see come through. And I think for your business, you must see some really thoughtful gifting going on. You know, with your you know lovely thoughtful messages um, coming through, and people are really quite thoughtful. You know, sending nice little gifts to their friends and family for all kinds of reasons. Yeah, definitely. And I think for us, it's those just because gifts yeah. that are kind of key, really. We do yeah. loads for all sorts of, you know, Big occasions, occasions. Mm. Uh, but we handwrite all our gift notes. And I've thought so often about having the technology in to be able to print them, which we, we could do and we probably should do time wise. But for mm. me, they just keep me so connected with yeah. the customer and the receiver. And they are the messages we receive are so beautiful and so meaningful that it's such yeah. a it's a really a real integral part of the business still actually yeah yeah and, and I think you know in this modern life we just crave that human connection and these little token thoughtful gifts is you know really delightful to see that and uh yeah, yeah we certainly see some of the messages coming through really 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 lovely I think in this modern world yeah we just so, so can be so disconnected and it's lovely to see a business like yours thriving and showing that people still want that human um connection and thoughtfulness so you mentioned you started the business eight and a half years ago. So what was your inspiration for the business? What were you doing before starting the business and what was your inspiration? So nothing related to baking biscuits. Um, off in the had, way, off in the way. Yeah, it is. And it was never, to be totally honest, it was never intended. It was kind of a business that was just kind of that just aim, I suppose. So, um, and interestingly, actually, it, it feels quite sort of significant because we were so we were going through we'd recently moved down to Oakham my husband's a dairy farmer and he'd taken on a farm down in Oakham and I was still working for a, I was working for a New Zealand travel company doing all their kind of online blog writing and website stuff remotely so working while well after we'd moved um so totally unconnected to biscuit baking but I've always enjoyed always loved baking it's always been my way of kind of showing like love to people is to bake them something um and we were going through uh, I think it was our second round of fertility treatment mm -hmm. down, we're living down here in Oakham and I was trying to find a gift to send somebody I've met loads of people going through something similar and it is without doubt one of the most doesn't matter how surrounded by support you are it is one of the most isolating and lonely and difficult things to experience things mm -hmm. to go through mm -hmm. and um I wanted a gift to send to somebody and I didn't know what literally just to let her know that I knew how it was it was going for a two week wait as were we and I just wanted to know that I knew knew how she felt and I didn't want to send flowers they didn't seem right and I didn't know what to write in a card and I'd seen these quotes I think it must have been Pinterest because I think it was pre my Instagram days and they just said um, you are loved you are brave you are strong you are not alone you are enough um, and you are beautiful and a friend had given me this little kit that had this like little holder and individual letters that you fed into the holder and you could spell out words. I think it was intended to stamp into biscuit dough rather than icing. But I'd seen this thing on Pinterest and I made these biscuits for her and I'd stamped these messages into the icing and I put them in a shoebox and I posted them to her. Um, 
just exactly for that reason, they landed on her doorstep when she wasn't expecting them. Um, and then I just, I have this huge love of inspirational quotes. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of them can be a bit cheesy, but I found when we were going through that, some of them to be so... It literally got me out it of bed can, in the morning. It can connect. Yes, to be honest, when you were just saying those quotes, I get teary. So, you know, yeah. they just connect, don't they? They're very, yeah. Yeah, and they're so simple. So I sent those to a friend and then I just carried on stamping messages onto biscuits, basically just eating them and, and feeding them to my husband uh, while we were going through that round of treatment. And um, it wasn't successful for us, unfortunately. Um, it was successful for my friend. And um, and she asked me to send some somebody else. And then I just had this... So we were right in the middle of what was a 10 year journey through um, fertility treatment. And I just needed something to give me a sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. And I just had this thought that if I can't find a gift for somebody going through something like this, and I'm looking online and I can't find it, then perhaps there is space for it and other people yeah. will need it. So friends set me up with a really basic website and that was it I didn't and it it got it absolutely got me through those years for sure mm -hmm. um and weirdly now when you said to me you know when I was saying about it not being an intentional kind of business plan it was almost and this sounds sounds really cheesy and I used to hate the analogy but it does feel like the business was almost born from our infertility we didn't we weren't successful we haven't got children we, we weren't able to um but the business has given me such a huge sense of purpose and meaning and that yeah. opportunity to connect or help people connect with each other and yeah, yeah so that that was where it all began yeah I mean your business is literally bringing joy on a daily basis you know those surprises through the post it's a lovely lovely yeah. thing to be able to do and deliver to people yeah. um so, so so obviously your early days were you know friends and and family I'm, I'm yeah. guessing but and you you got your website so did you very much kind of rely on kind of your web sales I guess ten, eight and a half years ago, dabbling in social media. Um, did you did you start to kind of do physical events or anything? What was your kind of route to growing your sales? It was really Instagram. We just, Instagram mm -hmm. just really took off for us. I think because the biscuits are so visual. Yeah, um, that was a real key for us. Mm -hmm. um, and we did we did the odd event. I've never done a huge amount of events. Partially, I think because one of our real sort of key um, elements of the business is that our products are personalized so pretty much every box of biscuits you can buy we can add a name or you can have the whole thing put on we, we can add a name to them so it was really important for me to keep that a part of it mm -hmm. but I didn't tend to do many events because of that reason really because we weren't able to offer something personalized if we were yeah. doing um events I've done the other one as more of kind of a marketing exercise um but yeah that was it was basically just through our Instagram and, and word of mouth because every time we send a box of biscuits somebody's receiving them who's mm -hmm. potentially then going to be a new customer and it just it just kind of grew grew um grew well, from that, there that way yeah fantastic yeah. and so you know in eight and a half years of running your business I'm, I'm sure you've seen a lot done a lot learned a lot and um, what for you kind of stands out as some kind of highlight major milestones major achievements that you're kind of most proud of um, I think often it's the smaller things. So often it's that I had a phone call from somebody um, a couple of weeks ago who um, was actually asking, he wanted to order some biscuits for his wife, who's a really big customer of ours, but they share a bank account, so he couldn't pay for them because um, she'd have seen. Um, and um, and he, he shared some stories with me about when they've sent biscuits in the past and the impact that they've had. And I think for me and for us all at the bakery, that's huge to us because I think as a business grows and you, you're you bringing in sort of more strategy and you're thinking of kind of um, growth plans and kind of how the business is going to evolve, it's so important to keep anchoring back to that why and to why you started the business and to what, where the meaning is and what, what that purpose is behind it. And I think, you know, there are, it's brilliant when we, when we have kind of, big projects and when we you know like it was starting to sell on I, I've been a customer of Young Balls for a really long time and so actually having our products as part of the Young Balls marketplace things like that are, are brilliant but 
it's often those smaller things I think that just really anchor you back into remembering remind you why you're doing it yeah, yeah definitely because yeah. it's so easy to get it's so hard running a business and growing a small yeah. business and there's so much pressure to be always looking ahead and yeah. looking to the next thing and I think for me the biggest lesson I've learned I think is that importance in stopping and reflecting and thinking well eight years ago I was just on my own threading letters into an holder yeah. at my kitchen table yeah so um it's so important to do that reflection I think isn't it definitely def and also appreciate you know how far you've come not just in terms of size but eight and a mm. half years of running your own business that's you know that's hard. that's hard work you know well you know patting yourself on the back and recognizing you know the fact I'm even still here and I've got a team of any size you know it's amazing achievement so and recognizing yeah. that and just enjoying where you're at now like you say rather than always looking at me I think it's really easy to look at what everybody else is doing and kind of yeah. do that comparison fall into that comparison trap and remembering that what we're seeing is what they're showing us yeah. and actually so much behind running a business that is hard and frustrating and challenging and a bit soul destroying sometimes yeah. and confusing and um, yeah. and I think you know it's, yeah it's remembering exactly as you said it's that um I definitely think that you can't always look at that growth either particularly not in this at the moment on on a financial trajectory you know you have to look at it as so much more and as you say sometimes it is just we're still here eight years yeah, eight years yeah. later we're still here we're still delighting customers we're still doing yeah. what we set out to do yeah yeah um and so you know you you mentioned you've got a team now um you know some some bakers that start out as you did decide to purposely not expand in that way they want to keep it kind of simple and you know because the minute you start hiring and everything is a whole different ball yeah. game of business yeah. so um what kind of who was your first kind of hire and why did you decide to take the plan how was that journey of going from just you to having a, a team I, I guess I'd say oh it's, it's such an interesting part of the journey isn't yeah it? So first would have definitely been when, once we moved I moved out from the farmhouse and moved into um the bakery I'd met somebody who had um a similar premises just down the road who made dog biscuits funnily enough so really similar business that accepts biscuits for dogs rather than biscuits for humans and she had someone who worked for her doing her baking all her baking and I was at the point where I knew I it was too much for me to do everything mm -hmm. um so Tash joined me to do some take over some of the baking which was amazing I mean she's so she's, she's She's brilliant. She's so when I have to go back in now and do the baking, my recipe is just never quite as good as <laughs> quite as good as hers. <laughs> so she does all the baking, and then not long after that, really soon after that, um, a friend said to me, "You need a VA," and I was like, "I don't even know what one of those is." <laughs> and, um, and funnily enough, I'd connected with somebody on Instagram who lived quite locally, which obviously isn't a necessity being a VA, but. Um, and I remember meeting her for a coffee and saying, I don't think you can help me because my whole business is in here. Yeah, yeah. Um, if, if it feels um, impossible to hand over any of the admin or anything. Completely, yeah. yeah. And I really, I genuinely didn't think it was possible, but I thought, we'll have a coffee. It would be nice to you know, get out of the bakery and be with somebody anyway. And she just said, well, I don't know either, but let's just give it a whirl. And I started with 10 hours a month with her. And gradually she kept saying, I'd say, I need to do this and she's saying maybe I could do that for you and and that's been a really lovely evolution because to me more than anything I feel like we're such a team like we're, we're such a partnership with that and she helps so much with all the back end mm -hmm. side because I'm full, full on creative side I'd yeah. love being in the bakery still but the kind of running of the business and the admin and the invoicing and all of that side of things is not my yeah not my strong suit yeah yeah no I mean it's a rare person that can do all of those things really well you know so at some point in running a business you have to start to accept okay where are my strengths and where can I plug the gaps um, Definitely. And, and, and I think that's the lesson isn't it is in hiring people to do you know you find the thing you're good at and get excellent at it yeah and the things that you're kind of okay at don't bother with those get somebody else who's excellent at those to take those yeah. on and that's so important yeah. I think yeah absolutely absolutely yeah. And, and you mentioned there you know quite rightly that running a small business is a big challenge what for yeah. you has kind of stood out as some of the or one of the biggest challenges that you've really had to learn in running your business I think any time I felt we've sort of moving to the next level in terms of 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 growing the business, I'm constantly feeling like I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how to do this, I don't know how to do this, and I think learning that that is 
nobody does nobody does when they when they start the next step whatever that is and I don't necessarily just mean in terms of direct growth but just trying something different or mm-hmm. um you know even things like a new partnership it's so is that is that going to work like is that how what how does that happen and I think just having that kind of trust knowing that you won't have the answers but somebody will and asking asking for help is it's huge I think you know I feel like I've got a really good accountant who's really helpful with any kind of of that side of questions um who you know who's absolutely brilliant that's been really key um and just accepting the help of people who are kind of perhaps more kind of mentors or advisors and people who have been there or had some experience allowing them to um help because so much it feels like almost on a daily basis there's something new to figure out especially at the moment and also with you know with technology with social media with with all areas with kind of like legislation everything it's you can't be completely on top of it all the time so I think just kind of yeah asking asking for help is the best way to get over those challenges I think yeah absolutely I I think I had a good quote a while back that running a business is like a journey of lifelong learning you know you never feel like you know it all and and, and that's good and healthy you know what do I don't I know the key is how do I find the answers to that who do I who do I speak to? Where do I look? You know, the, really running a business is your ability to figure out things um, and find yeah. information. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and so, you know, in, in that, is there anything that, you know, if you were to start your business again, um, is there anything fundamentally that you would have done differently? Or you kind of wish you'd known knew then what you knew now? Kind of. Um, I think. I think probably one of the things that I wish I'd really known is that nobody's got it figured out you know I think I I definitely am much better at it now like partly through running the business for eight years partly through the wisdom of aging years <laughs> and then um, just having that kind of knowing that it I think I put a lot of pressure on myself in the beginning mm-hmm. know exactly what I was doing to have this strong kind of five-year plan and to be quite kind of rigid with that and to kind of I think looking back just yes planning is good but it's also really hard because things happen like COVID like yeah, yeah. you know things things come at us and it's having that flexibility and adaptability to be able to kind of pivot if you need to or um you know kind of and and also I think having that to me a really big part of of what I love about the business and I'm definitely better at now is is trusting that the path that I'm on is the right path for me with my business and it might look different from somebody else's business or it will look very different from somebody else's business and and not to do that kind of not to try and head down in a particular direction because you think it's the direction you should go in Mm -hmm. but to really kind of remain kind of true to I think it's that success thing, isn't it? You know, yeah. we have this idea in our head and we're told what success should look like. And yeah. I think it's as much an age thing as anything else is that realisation that success is so different from all of us. And it might just be that it's a business that gives you the flexibility and the freedom to spend more time yeah. with your family or with your books and outside. You know, it doesn't... It, having this strong kind of growth trajectory in a financial sense is not always going to be yeah. right for every business like that's so important I think yeah yeah no I think there's lots of great learnings there one, one is I guess about trusting your vision trusting what's unique about your business it doesn't have to look anything like the others of course use inputs use ideas but but yeah. stay true to what you think is the the right route so yeah, so definitely. um all right and um obviously um you know you're you know, over the eight and a half years it sounds like predominantly your sales are web-based you know your own website Instagram's key for you obviously selling on Yumbles um yeah. So what have you learned are kind of some fundamentals when it comes to selling online that you think are really important and have helped you kind of grow those sales online? Creating community. You know, we talk about it a lot, don't we? But I think it's been really important for me to make sure that or to kind of build that community and have that connection with people. I think, you know, having being a person behind a business is it's always been important but I think that's so important to kind of have that um have that connection with your customers and also to kind of just keep really keep listening to them to kind of keep really listening to what 
your customers are wanting, listening to their feedback, building that loyalty. Mm-hmm. Um, is, that's huge for us. So our repeat customer base is really, is really, really big. And, and that for me as well is a real joy because I feel like we quite often, we sort of travel down people's milestones with them. Yeah. Um, and I really, I really, really love that. I mean, there's always more, I think having, having some, having the support, having Marlon, my VA, to help with those areas of things, like she ha- takes a lot of the social media now, because I got to a point where I realised that that was just, it was just too much. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing that's been really important, particularly over this last year, is building our newsletter community. Mm-hmm. So really working hard to kind of build build community that way has been um been okay great. fantastic and, and and often sellers ask what um email marketing system are you using for that are you using mailchimp or are you using something mailchimp. Like mailchimp yeah yeah we use mailchimp yeah okay all right fantastic well i could talk to you all day caroline but yeah, thank you so much for your time and sharing your fantastic story thank you so much really lovely to talk to you